please welcome Pastor Aldrin Poblete. Oh, hello. Ah, there you go. Good morning again, everyone. It's always very good to be back here in Lighthouse Church, Pattaya. <laughs> so, welcome to all of you and welcome to all our online worshipers. Thank you so much again, Pastor Nick and uh, Julie, for inviting us here in your wonderful church. You know, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And all these lovely people of Lighthouse Church of Pattaya. Amen. Amen. <laughs> You know, uh, we are so excited every time we come here because you have accepted us as part of your spiritual family. And thank you so much. Thank you so much. We thank you for the very warm welcome we receive here every time we come here. Okay, so today we are on a series break. And uh, I'm sure you just finished your... Uh, joyful series. How many of you uh, enjoyed that series? You know, you've learned so much. You've learned how to have so much joy in whatever circumstance you are in, right? And so today we will be looking at the book of uh, Luke chapter 4 and talk about the account of during the time when Jesus Christ was tempted. I'm sure all of us here are familiar with this. You know, when Jesus Christ was tempted by the devil, and uh, because the devil is always out there, just like what uh, uh, Howard mentioned a while ago, we all face a battle in life, right? But not all of those, here's the thing, not all of those battles are caused by us. Yes, we have our own failings. Yes, we make our mistakes. Yes, we make wrong decisions in life. But eventually, you know what? There, we have to realize that there is a spiritual battle that goes on in our life every day. And this is what we want to talk about today. We, we want to see how, because, you know, God, Jesus Christ is real. Of course, we, 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 we know this, right? But as real as Jesus Christ is, the devil is also real. I'm not scaring you, but you know, the devil is really real. And the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's all the enemy does to our lives. And so we want to talk about this uh, time when Jesus Christ was tempted right after he had his 40 days of fasting. We want to talk about this because I believe a lot of us will learn something from this on how we can fight back the enemy whenever he attacks us. Amen? So... You know, uh, the title of our message for today is, I am, therefore I will. Can we, can we read this all together? I am, therefore I will. You know, to begin my message this morning, uh, in the Philippines, we are very um, active in doing community outreach programs. Being a licensed dentist, I had our medical and dental team in the Philippines, in our church. And uh, we would go to different, less privileged areas in the Philippines, and we would be doing free medical and dental services several times a year. We would give out uh, free eyeglasses, we would do feeding programs, uh, we, would, we would do all of these things. We would give out free medical and dental uh, services but ultimately, our, our objective is to be able to share the, the Word of God. Because that is our greatest need after all, right? But you know what? Uh, one thing that I remember while we, uh, we were doing these things is that the night before I go to the community outreach program, I would get sick or I would not feel well. You know what? 90% of those times... I would get sick the night before. And uh, somehow, I, when I noticed that it would always happen, you know, somehow I learned how to fight back. And that is what we want to talk about today. How can we fight the attacks of the enemy? You know, it's as if, 
you know, all these attacks are not enough, we get this COVID virus. Shame up. Oh, I'm talking to the Thais. <laughs> right? And uh, it's as if we, there's an endless, endless number of trials and battles that we face every day. Now, how many of you experience this? in your life one day or you know or another you know you're so encouraged probably uh you're coming here to church i just heard the testimony of kundeng he was telling me yesterday how he was supposed to come here on a sunday to attend the worship service but then his car broke down <laughs> you're about to do something good you're excited to go to church or maybe sometimes you are so excited, you know, after coming here, attending church, and then you're so encouraged by the word, you heard the message from Pastor Nick, and you're ready to go out there and make disciples, right? And make the kingdom of God known here in Pattaya. But then right after you step out of those doors, I don't know how many of you uh, have experienced this before. You went out that door, you ride your car, you're on your way to a nice restaurant, have yourself a nice lunch, and then somehow something happens and your day is ruined. How many of you have experienced this before? Right? And <laughs> sometimes the reasons are, they come from different things. And so we want to talk about today how we can avoid and fight all of these things. Amen? So, you know, it's not only us who experiences these things. Jesus Christ experienced being tempted right after he got baptized by the Holy Spirit. And it did not happen once, it happened several times. And for us, you know, if Jesus Christ is not exempted from trials and temptations and battles and challenges in life, well, what makes us exempted from any of these things? Right? So, uh, we want to talk about this, that the enemy is real, his attacks are real, but as Christians, you know, we have an even more real God who is with us every step of the way. Amen? Okay, so I believe we can all learn something from this message today. And so may I ask everybody to please stand as we read our verse for today. I'll be uh, reading Luke chapter 4, verses 3 to 12. Can we all read together? The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not be bread alone. And the devil took him up, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, and said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, you shall not put the Lord, your God, to the test. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word, for your message this morning. Lord, it is our prayer that you will enlighten your word so that transformation can happen in the lives of your people. Lord, it is our prayer that hope and faith will arise in this place and that people who hear your message, dear Father, will just be daring to go out there and honor you by making disciples of this nation. Lord, this is our prayer. I pray that you anoint the preaching of your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We can all take our seats. Whew. I'm excited to preach this morning. I don't know why. I'm excited to preach every time I'm here. <laughs> you know, the scripture, the scripture tells us that the devil is real. John 10.10 10 says, you know, the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The devil, we have to know and keep in mind that the devil is always out there trying to stop the very purpose of God from happening in our lives. 
Amen. But you see, the devil has been, his tactics have been revealed to us. You know, his strategy ever since during the time of Adam and Eve has been the same until now. You know, I, I preached this message one time in Bangkok and right after I preached, I was attacked by the enemy. My back was like so painful the whole day. I had to fight because I know it was a spiritual battle. And so, Lord, I pray for your covering as I preach this message. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You know, the devil uses the same strategy ever since. In 1 John, 1 John, there you go. Thank you so much. 1 John 2, verses 15 and 16 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now, mention, uh, look how John mentions three categories of sin here. Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life. Three categories of sin where all sin comes from. Okay? Now, going back, I, I said the strategy of the enemy has been the same since the time of Adam and Eve. Now, let's go back uh, to the time in Genesis 3. Can we go to Genesis 3, verses 6? says, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Now notice, can we move to the next slide please? Notice how they are very much the, the same. First John says, the desires of the flesh the enemy uh, tempts uh, Adam and Eve. He says, this is good for food. And then uh, John says, the desires of the eyes. How, how did the enemy frame it in his temptation of Adam and Eve? It is a delight to the eyes. And then lastly, he says, pride of life. You know, it is something to be desired to make one wise. You see the similarity of how the enemy works even during the time of Adam and Eve until now. The enemy has been using the same strategy. His strategy has been revealed and exposed to each one of us. And now that we know the strategy of the enemy, it's time for us to fight back. Amen? It's time for us to defend ourselves from these attacks. Now, I want to go back to the beginning of this account uh, in the temptation of Jesus Christ in verses 1 and 2. Luke chapter 1. There you go. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. Notice how Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. Right after he fasted for 40 days, he was hungry, of course. Right? Have you tried fasting for... Anybody here tried fasting for 40 days? Really? I will ask for your testimony later. <laughs> now, <laughs> Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit. Notice that he, Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. How many of you know when Jesus Christ, because the, the event that happened right before this, right before this temptation, you know what happened? Jesus Christ was baptized in the Jordan River. And the account says that the heavens opened and then the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove came down upon him. And then a voice from heaven was heard saying, this is my one and only beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You know, that was the identity of Jesus Christ. And when you believe Jesus Christ, when you allow Jesus Christ inside your heart, that has also become your identity in Christ. And so this is what I want all of us to do right now. Tell the person beside you, 
God loves you. No matter what. <laughs> that is your identity in Christ. God loves you. When you offered yourself to Jesus, He has loved you the way He loved His one and only Son, Jesus Christ. That is, this is our identity now in Christ. Amen? So, three things that we can learn from this account. First, is that Jesus knew his identity. Can we go to the verse, please? Verse 3 says, The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God. <laughs> you know, he, just, he was just baptized. Jesus was just baptized by the Holy Spirit and affirmed by God the Father. And then what does the enemy do? He attacks the identity of Jesus Christ. If you are the Son of God. How many of you have... Uh, experience being asked by the enemy inside your head. Are you really a son of God? Are you really a believer of Christ? I know what you did last summer. <laughs> In fact, I know what you did just this morning. I saw you fighting with your wife inside your car. Are you really a son of Christ? You know, the devil will always attack our identity in Christ. Why? Because the enemy doesn't want us to fulfill God's purpose for our lives. He wants to, to remove us, to get us away from our real identity in Christ so that he can destroy our future. Do you know that the, the devil is out there to destroy your future? The devil is real. But so is our God. Don't forget that. So is our God. And our God is a lot bigger, mightier, more powerful than the devil. The devil, the Bible says, has already been defeated. He has been defanged. Defanged means, you know, no more teeth. <laughs> no, 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 no. What that enemy can only do is lie to you. You know, like this. You are not the son of God. <laughs> The devil has been defanged. You know, the enemy's only power is to deceive us and to instill fear and doubt in our hearts. That is what the enemy does. Tries to confuse us. Tries to deceive. You know, you heard a good preaching. You, you know, you heard the word of God here on a Sunday or maybe you're in a life group. And then what does the enemy do? No, the enemy attacks you right away. You know, the enemy is a good salesman. I, I learned that in sales. When is the, when is the very first, uh, when is the best time for you, if you made the sale, when is the best time for you to call back your, your, um, your buyer? You know, the answer is right away. <laughs> not after one month, not after one year. But you know, once you get back home, you made the sale, the, 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 the buyer goes, you say, Thank you so much. You, you immediately affirm your buyer. That's okay for the salespeople here. That's just a tip. Okay? Best time for you to call back your client is right after you make that sale. Amen. The devil tries to copy that. You know, John 10.10 10 says, The devil is out there to steal, kill, and destroy. But you know what, Jesus... He knew his identity. He knew, he knows that he is the one and only beloved son of God. And nothing can steal that. Nothing can take that. Nothing can destroy that from him. And so that is also my very first thing I want to tell you guys. You are sons of God. That is your true identity in Christ. Amen? Now, I want to show you this. This is what happened yesterday. Woohoo! You know, yesterday we did our Making Disciples class. May I ask all those who attended to stand up, please, so that we can recognize you? Come on! You share your testimony, yeah? Now let's just, uh, okay. Thank you so much, guys, for completing the class. Now we can all take our seats. <laughs> You know, if you are here and uh, you know, 
saw these people, if you were not able to attend the class yesterday, I would, I would encourage you to attend the Making Disciples class. You know, whatever training uh, Pastor Nick comes up with here, you know, those are all for our own good. Those are all part of our Christianity. Those are all part of our uh, belief. Amen? So, can I get a yes from you to attend or join the next uh, trainings? Come on. Yes, Pastor Nick. Kau na bahala dito. <laughs> now, going back to our scripture, going back to our scripture, uh, Luke 4, 4. How does Jesus answer the lie of the enemy? He quotes the word of God in Deuteronomy 8.3. This is what he said. And Jesus answered him, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. He quotes the word of God. He actually quotes Deuteronomy 8.3. Can we move, show Deuteronomy 8.3? No. And he humbled you and let your, you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not even which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. What does this tell us? It tells us how important having the word of God is in our lives, in our hearts. Why? Because God and his word. They're one. <laughs> so it's very important for us to have the word of God. Keep them in our hearts. Engraved, the Bible says. Keep it engraved in, the, in, in our hearts. So that the enemy cannot steal it away from us. Amen? So Jesus quoted Deuteronomy 8.3. What was Jesus trying to say here? What was the underlying message of why Jesus quoted Deuteronomy 8.3? You know, because Satan attacked his immediate need. He attacked his, uh, his hunger. You know, everybody knows when, when you fasted for 40 days, you'd be hungry right after that. What does the enemy do? You know, if you're really the son of God, turn this bread into stone to prove that you are the son of God. But what does Jesus do? He quotes the word of God. This is how important it is to have the word of God. And so the underlying that, uh, message that Jesus was saying here, food is not my greatest need. My greatest need is the Word of God. That was the underlying message that Jesus Christ was trying to say here. God is our greatest need. He is the greatest need of our life. No, I'm not trying to simplify this, but it truly is. Maybe you do not realize it, but you see, the Bible says in the book of Romans that the, the gospel, the word of God, you know, it has the power to change lives. No, the gospel is the power of Christ to save lives, to transform lives, to bring salvation to us. The word of God is powerful. It is active. It is living. It is sharper than that two-edged sword. It's powerful. That is our spiritual weapon. Amen? Jesus says, food is not the greatest need of my life. My greatest need is the word of God. Not our money, not our material possessions. Those are good. But they're not our greatest need. Amen? As people of God, we should realize how important it is to have the word of God living inside of us. Just like what Jesus showed. Now, see, having the word of God is very important because the enemy will always try to steal our identity in Christ. Amen? So the lesson I'm trying to say here is this. Now, let's declare this. I am a son of God. Therefore, I will think, I will act and obey as a son of God, we have to establish our identity in Christ. Do not let the enemy steal, kill, or destroy your identity in Christ. It's very important. Jesus knew his identity. Now, second point we have is that Jesus knew who to worship. Verses 5 to 8. And the devil took him up. Verses 5 to 8. There you go. 
And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Lust of the eyes. All the kingdoms of the world. In a moment of time and said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory. That is a lie. That is a big fat lie if you ever see one. See one you know? It's not in the power of Satan to give anything, especially the authority. Now, that is a big fat lie of the enemy out there. You have to realize how the enemy works, how the enemy tries to deceive you. Okay? And said, to you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me. And give it to whom I will. He has no power to give anything to anyone. You know, it is only God who has the power to give anything to anyone. And then, uh, where, where are we now? It has been delivered to me and I give it to whom I will. Verse 7, if you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Wow. And Jesus answered him, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Can you just imagine being offered everything? What's your deepest longings in life? Think about it. And then think about the enemy telling you, just worship me and I will give it to you. What will be your answer? <laughs> what was the devil doing here? He was tempting Jesus to worship him. The devil was tempting Jesus to worship him. Now for all of us here, you might be thinking, Pastor, Pastor, at Pastor is Tagalog. Pastor, all the English-speaking people here. The Americans are taking over your church. You know, what, what, what is the underlying message of the devil when he was tempting Jesus, you know, with these words? You know, he's saying... For, for some of us here, you might be thinking, Pastor, Pastor, <laughs> Tagalog, I will never worship the devil. That is too obvious. Too obvious. Right? But here's the thing. Here's the thing. When we run after the things of this world more than we run after God, it is essentially bowing down, bowing down to the will of the enemy. You know, it's essentially bowing down to those things and we are offering ourselves to those things. You know what bowing down and worshiping other, uh, what worshiping, uh, I, I mean uh, bowing down and offering ourselves to these things, that is exactly the meaning of worship. Can we show the meaning of worship? You know, worship is when we offer ourselves to God and when we bow down to God. The very same thing that the enemy was trying to deceive Jesus with. Now, this is exciting. Let's talk about worship. Let's talk about worship here. You know, we, when we come to church, we do not only worship when we sing songs of praise. How many of you were blessed by our worship team this morning? Oh my goodness, I didn't want to stop worshiping anymore. I said, that's already the message. No need, to, no need for the message. That's the message. You know, you guys are great. And uh, you play a very big role. So let's, can, can we just uh, uh, honor our worship team? You know. Now, let's talk about worship. You know, we come here to church every Sunday for only one thing. And that is to worship God. Yes, having fellowship with, with the people around, with our friends, that's nice, right? Uh, getting to see your pastor, getting to see your friends, that's nice. You know, fellowshipping, of course, having something to eat again you know, afterwards and going to different places, that's nice. But we come to service every Sunday for only one thing. And this is to worship God. And we worship God not only when the praise and worship team is here,
But we worship God in songs, the sermon, the preaching of the word. We worship God by listening to his word. We worship God when we have our uh, communion here. That's part of worship. And lastly, prayer, supplication. Now, we worship God in all parts from beginning to end of our worship service. That's why it's called a worship service. <laughs> you know, everything that we do from the opening prayer, I love the opening prayer, pa uh, Pastor Julie. Uh, I love the opening prayer from the very first time, thing you, you, you pray here until Pastor Nick gives you the final blessing. That's worship. Everything that happens here on a Sunday is worship. It's worship. Okay? Hello? Okay. So, how do we now respond to this knowing that from start to finish is a form of worship to God? How do we now respond in a practical way? You know, one practical way I can think about is not coming late for service. <laughs> not coming late. You know, at every, you know, in, in church, we should never be on time. Get this, we should never be on time. We should always be ahead of time. Because if you are just in time, then you're already late. Okay? So, we should never be on time. We should always be ahead of time. Let's be excited because we will, we will be worshiping God. We, will, we are given this opportunity. You know, just this morning I was uh, standing there. Where's Peter? There's Peter. You know, he, he said, it's a good day. I said, yes, it's a good day because we woke up. Can you just imagine the millions of people who did not wake up this morning? The very... The, the, the very fact that you are here right now and you're alive, that is something that is a very big blessing from the Lord. The moment when you wake up and open your eyes, that is already, you know, a time for you to uh, just worship and praise God. Thank you, Lord, I'm still alive. Right? You know, but there's nothing wrong with dying as well. We can finally get to meet God. That's a good thing. We also want to, uh, while we're still alive, we should be thankful for everything that God has for us. Amen? Amen. Romans 12, 1 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as your bodies as a living, living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship in Christ. Amen? Amen. Now, the lesson here for our second point is this. That I am a let's read all of this together. Declare this: I am a believer of Christ. Therefore, I will worship Him alone. Let's add something to that. I am a believer of Christ, and I will not come late every Sunday. <laughs> Please, it's a time of worship. You will never be late for your wedding. You will never be late for an Avengers movie. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Go, Maui. <laughs> Especially if you're part of the ministry. Diba? Okay. Point number three. Jesus knew his purpose. Verses 18 and 19, I'm about to end. It's already close to 12 o'clock. <laughs> Sorry. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. What does this tell us? Jesus knew His purpose. His purpose was to proclaim the good news, set people free, heal people, and to proclaim the year of God's favor. You know, our purpose in life, two things, to honor God and make disciples. We honor God by everything that we do, 
we honor God as well whenever we make disciples. We have to understand that Christ's mission is our mission. We have to understand this. If you are a believer of Christ, you are called to do this, the great commission of Christ, to honor God by making disciples of all nations. Amen? So our lesson for this third point is this. Let's uh, read all together. I am a disciple of Christ, there will, for I will make other disciples. I will preach his word. Now, as part of making, uh, of making disciples and honoring God, we also want to honor and, uh, our leaders. We will be calling three of our pastors here, and uh, we will be praying for them. We will commission them to make disciples as well. This is part of making disciples. Amen? We want to commission some of your leaders here who will help Pastor Nick and Julie to carry the weight of the ministry here in Lighthouse Church, Pataya. And as we, as we are about to end, as we are about to end, you know, the one thing that we can see all of, in all of these attacks to Jesus Christ is only one thing, and that is Him using the Word of God to counter all of these attacks. Amen? And so this is, this is very important for all of us. This is how important and how powerful the Word of God is in our lives. Amen. So uh, some, just, some practical applications on our message for today. Completely trust God you know, and trust your life to Him. He will never leave you nor forsake you. You may be going through some things, some challenges in your life right now. Maybe some of Nobody among, in, in this church knows that you are going through something. But you know, God knows. God hears. God sees. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. And He's all, he's, he's all we ever need. You need healing. You know, God is your healer. You need uh, to be mentored to, ministered to. God is always there. Second thing, hold on to His word. Jesus Christ held on to His word. Any attacks, he was holding on to the Word of God. That was his, uh, his, his armor and his weapon against all of these attacks. And then lastly, you know, we are called to make other disciples. We are called to honor him by making other disciples, making Jesus known, making his kingdom known wherever you are. Amen. And so can I ask everybody to please stand as we end? You know, if you're here, if you're here, and uh, maybe, you know, you're going through some battles right now in your life, personal battles, emotional battles, physical battles, and you're saying, I want somebody to pray for me, whatever it is. Now, anybody here, you're, you, you want to be prayed for? Anybody, just raise your hand. Anybody? Yes? Now maybe you're sick and you want to claim God's healing upon your life. Oh, there. Yeah. God knows you. God sees. 